So we have a bookmark. What's the theme for this year? Just love. Just love. Just love. How many ways can you say that? Just love. And our uh, first love, our first book was Fierce Love. How many actually got to read that book? It was wonderful. And fierce doesn't necessarily mean ferocious. And uh, it was a wonderful book to remind us about fierce love. And the book for March and April is called The Love Mindset. And The Love Mindset is written by uh, Veronica Tugalova, I think is her name. And um, her book is about how to heal and deepen the relationship with ourselves. Now, I just want to say that uh, I had a couple practitioners say to me that choosing the theme Just Love has been a very inspirational uh, theme to be doing daily practice. And while, of course, yes, we all believe in love, we know we're connected via love, to actually be focused on that on a daily basis brings about a whole different perspective for the day. And as you become more doing your spiritual practice to become more self-aware, to discover more of yourself and to find that inner wisdom that lives within you, this book supports, it's very easy to read, not a chewy one, as somebody would say, based on some of the other books. Um, and she basically describes that she couldn't stand to look at herself in the mirror in the beginning. And of course, when you're in that space, you're still trying to figure out how do I get, how did I get here and how do I get out of this space? Not, not even necessarily being aware of what are the thoughts, feelings, or beliefs that have you in such a place such that you don't want to look at yourself physically, not alone internally. But something changed for her. And she became, I'll call it, enlightened and awakened. And most folks, when you say they've become enlightened, you, you usually think, what spiritual path were they on when that happened? But this person uh, doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable with organized religion. And I would say that, uh, so she wasn't spiritually provoked, but life provoked her awakening. And she was willing to listen. Essentially, she shares that she had a mental breakdown that led to an experience of understanding universal love. So, she now sees life through a different lens. And I didn't try this at home and realized I was going to have to double up on my glasses. <laughs> all right. As we were all raised, wherever that was, whatever our circumstances, parents, grandparents, foster care, whatever, whatever it was that the environment uh, was while we grew up, we learned filters. Filters of beliefs. Filters of what to focus on. Filters on what to react to. In other words, if your family had drama, you're probably used to drama. Filters of what to trust and who to trust and who to not trust. How to manage yourselves or not manage yourselves. That could be around addiction. That could be around anger. That could be around how relationships function. Filters for what got said and what didn't get said. Filters about what to expect from others your neighbors, 
your government, your job, maybe even expectations from God. Filters about the language of love or not. So in the background, there are just events. Just events. But we have our filters through which we see those events. You see the different color? Yeah. Okay. Just make it obvious, right? <laughs> so, if you were born the same year as me, you may have experienced things around the world, things that happened in the United States, things that happened in the country, the, the state. But that doesn't mean that even though they were the same events, your family had different filters. And as we look at those events through our filters for such a long period of time, it just becomes our identity and the reality with a small R. <laughs> and we don't realize that we have these filters. We aren't aware that our filters are there. They just are. So, what filters or lessons, what lenses, filters or lenses, are you looking through? Now, let me stop for a moment and ask if somebody would like to, in their own words, reverberate and summarize what just got said there. Anybody? Connie? You see what you're trying to see. You see what you're trained to see. Yeah. And that becomes a mind process. And even though the events are happening out there, what is it that we have trained our mind to see? So in the book, Veronica talks about the love filter. And she believes that we have collectively accepted a love deprivation as a normal state. A love deprivation. I forgot I was going to take my yeah, mask yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> well, the real Kathy Fernandez, please come forward. <laughs> Off that filter. I love that. That's great. Ellen. Okay. Now we don't acknowledge our love deprivation state. So when you don't acknowledge it, you can't address it. And Veronica herself actually had a recorder and went around and asked people, what is love? How do you think that went? Wow. <laughs> All over the place. And she spoke about some that sort of rolled their eyes, some that were very superficial, and some that were very deep. So even when we say the word love, the filter is alive and well. Love is actually a state of awareness. Because love just is. Love is a form of unity and natural connection with all living things. And love is always, always flowing, constantly, abundantly, eternally. But what lenses are you looking through? <laughs> I want you to think about that for a second. Love, what changes is our 
perception of love. People are looking outside themselves for the affirmation of, do you love me? Oh, if I do this, then I'll feel love. Thinking it's love is on the outside and we're trying to bring it in. And people tend to think that relationships are static and love varies. <laughs> it's really the other way around. I wouldn't say love is static, but I would say love is never changing. It's relationships and people that change based on our filters. And those filters will even change when we're in the time of trouble versus when we're in the time of deep connection with people. Love is eternal, ever-present. Love is always present, but what lenses are you looking through? So, we're a chemistry lab, right, Leanne? Leanne's a chemistry chemist, teaching chemistry. And we are able, via our thoughts, if we're in fear versus in love, to change the chemistry in our body. And if I had the power to cause you to fear, then of course I am changing your chemistry. And so you experience fear or love based on your thoughts. So then why are we searching outside of ourselves to ask that a person or event create love for us? Habit training. Habit training filters that you have no idea are filters and is not the event without the filters. Now, Just to keep reminding you. So where is our power? Our power is in our awareness and our intention on what we want to focus on. We have a choice every single moment. And of course, habit, we're not choosing, we're in habit. So we have the power to experience that universal, unwavering love in every single minute. If we're not looking out there to make the chemistry change in here, we have that power. Are you making full use of that ability? I repeat, are you making full use of that ability, that power? Most of us have learned to share love conditionally and selectively. Putin. Been having lots of conversations with myself. And I thank Vicki for the beautiful <laughs> meditation this morning about peace. And what became so visible, visible for me is that just like a rock in a pond, that ripple effect moves out. And that scientific now, but we've known that for, for generations. But of course, under the current circumstances of the Ukraine-Russian war, of course, First of all, it's hard to find words. And of course, I did prayer for multiple nights, and one night it was just sort of like, is this doing any good? I just had to remind myself, what do I know? I know that we're one. And I know that if I can move myself into the space of love and peace, that I am like that rock in the pond causing a ripple 
And again, there are many research situations that show when we come together, and by the way, on our Facebook, I repeated for the woman who is the spiritual director in Geneva, Switzerland, at noon our time every day for 10 minutes, people come together. So we are taking that vibration and strengthening that vibration towards peace. But I, you know, again, I go through multiple iterations and for a while it was like, you know, I stand for the Ukrainians. Well, not just the Ukrainians, but the Russians. But of course the Russians, and if I say it generically, they get told certain things, do they not? What is their filter? And it's not fair in some cases to judge that this is the filter that is being presented to them. It's not hubris. It's not good to have hubris to say you need to see the world my way. I can't change those filters for them. So then it was my prayers, yes, are for the Ukrainians and also for the Russians. And then I had to narrow in on Putin. And there's a part of me that's like, well, I don't want to give him focus and attention and power. Ah, but he's the one that I want to understand and love. And it's difficult for me not to judge. And yet I know I don't want judgment. So when I don't have words, I just surround him in love light. Now, I don't know what that means externally, meaning I'm not going to wish ill will on him because what ill will has already done to him is what causes the war. I don't want to add to that. But I want to add that his soul, that his spirit, learn the truth about love. And I'll let the universe, the source, God, determine what that is and how that is for him. That is not my role. My role is to understand that he is a spiritual being. And if you want to use some filters, his power is rippling throughout the world. And so what do we want to understand the truth so that the truth aligns in our world and that that power become obvious? And, you know, whether you believe it or not, I'm not trying to get political here, but Biden uh, had a quote that said something like, Putin expected the world and the United States to be divided, but that's not what happened. So I can look at the unity that is coming together, that are spending trips and people coming together focusing on peace. I know we're not there yet, but we are an evolving species. <laughs> and no matter how impatient I want to be with now, <laughs> It does draw me to that intention with not just like, oh, yeah, but a very strong intention. And so we are reinforcing with each other what we understand about the world. And there are many countries coming together saying, no, none of us want war. That is an old way of de uh, dealing with disagreements. So when we choose to love conditionally and selectively, we suffer the limit of love. We suffer because we don't want to change our filter. So, the love mindset, and of course, I still have six weeks to continue reading more of what Veronica has to say, but the love mindset 
is the idea that we're like a compass, always looking for love. <laughs> That's right, Alan, because where should I be looking for love? Within. Right. right here. Right here. And for some of us, it's like, oh, yeah, I love myself. I'm not talking about narcissistic love. I'm talking about love that just exudes itself by the presence of your being because you're so aligned with knowing love. And that doesn't need words or bragging to be known. Just walking into the room, your presence is all that's needed to understand and speak love. So now we get to look with the filter of what vices do we have or where is it that we're looking for confirmation for our insecurity to show me I'm loved. Show me. Instagram notifications. Instagram notifications. <laughs> yes. And um, this center is in the middle, we're almost done, of developing an app that has affirmations, treatments, and lessons on topics, love, joy, grief, fear, relationships. So we'll be on notifications. <laughs> and you can actually, uh, in that app, create the affirmations that, that inspire you. So love is the mindset or the awareness that no matter what we're doing, meditating, doing activities with the family, going to work, is to be wearing our love mindset. to see the interconnectedness in everything and everyone moment to moment. And I think this, I've said this before, um, actually at the forest therapy yesterday, this body is a community, a community of five trillion cells living in peace and harmony. You are a community of five trillion cells. And then this spiritual community and our connectedness, trillions and trillions of cells. And it's easy for me to see the interconnectedness, knowing, especially being in nature, that I breathe out the carbon dioxide, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> dioxide, <laughs> chemist in the room, please help me. <laughs> And the trees are taking that in and giving us what? Oxygen. And not only oxygen, I learned yesterday, I'm jumping ahead of myself, that especially evergreens produce phyton phytoncides, phyton phytoncides, phytoncides, P-H-Y-T-O-N-S-I-D-E-S. What is that? Phytoncides. And phytocides, when we breathe them in, they are antibacterial, antifungal, and antimicro, micro, micro, microbial. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a chemist. <laughs> but you know what that means, right? We are researching that nature is really a healing source for every one of us. That interconnectedness. Why we were th ever thought we were outside of that versus part of that system? All right. So. It is only because we seek love as it lives outside of us that we miss it again and again and again. You know, you probably have read that little thing that says, you know, if God wanted to hide something, the best place to hide it was inside of us. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? 
But when we change our filter to see love already present and stop expecting others and other things to show us that love, that's when we come into alignment with love is already here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the forest therapy because I hope to entice you to to do it again, you know, that those of us that did it to do it again, and they've already said they would, and those that haven't yet done it to join us. Um, you know, uh, the Center for Spiritual Living has a philosophy called Science of Mind by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. And Dr. Ernest Holmes was influenced by Thoreau and Emerson. And I always mix them up. Emerson wrote nature. Thoreau wrote Walden. And Thoreau built his own cabin. And do you know that people in his times said that Thoreau was lazy <laughs> because he didn't want to work? <laughs> and others said he's brilliant in how he can write his reflections on living with nature. Filters. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because um, Thoreau said he just wanted to live simply. But people still judged him for that. <laughs> he built the cabin all by himself, lived for two years, two months, on his own in nature. And later sold that cabin to Emerson. Did you know that? <laughs> Fascinating. I knew they were friends, but wow, uh, they were they were more interconnected than I thought. A real estate deal. <laughs> yeah, real estate deal. Um, so forest therapy originated in Japan, and that's where they began the research of the trees and how their healing powers. And um, as we spend time in nature, f for me. Uh, I was known as a tomboy. I was always climbing trees, and, you know, I loved that ability. I was athletic, and I liked the new views. New views means new filters. And many times we are resistant to let go of the old filters and even be curious Right, Mo, the teacher? Mo talks about how she's always asking questions. Her and Reverend Michael are perfect. He calls himself uh, the, wonder wa the, wander man. the wander man. The wonder man. Nature might be the best place to discover that love just is. One participant was sitting on the ground in the grass, and we had many invitations to reflect on as we walked through the Indian fishery at the end of West Sacramento. And I'm paraphrasing, but the person says, I feel loved. I right now am supported by this earth, supported by this air, sitting in the lush grass, looking at the beauty of the trees and hearing the birds sing their song. Mm. There's no words for that. It's just, mm. <laughs> So the love mindset is really about us replacing or releasing our filters. They limit us to what really is. And if we can let go of our filters, we can open to what is, which is just love. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste.